In this short video, I'm going to assume you are an educated atheist. You have a college degree and you have been trained to think logically and rationally about the world we live in. In other words, you're a smart person. You know how the world works. You know how to think logically. If you are an educated atheist, I would like to talk with you today about an important and interesting question. Have you ever thought about using your college education to think about the origin of life? Your life and your career demand that you behave and act logically. Let's apply your critical thinking skills as we discuss these simple questions. If we have a simple problem, say trying to figure out what X is, and let's say we know and have observed X to equal Y consistently as long as man has been an observation about their environment x has always equaled y. And let's say we know and have observed x to never equal z. As long as man has been an observation about their environment, x has never equaled z. And no matter what you add or subtract to z, it never will equal x. And this has been an observed fact for as long as man has been an observation about their environment. Now, we need to find out what x squared is. We have never observed x squared, but evidence shows that at one time it had to exist. Now, none of this has been observed, but doing the math, if we needed to relate x squared to either y or z, which would you use? Of course, the answer is too simple. If x is equal to y, then x squared would be equal to y squared. It is just that simple. It is by far the most logical conclusion. It would be illogical and irrational to use z since z never relates to x. It would be crazy to try to use z to solve the problem of x squared. Now let's use the same logic in dealing with the origin of life. x is life. x equals y so therefore y is life as well. z is non-living matter. We know and have observed life to create life consistently as long as man has been an observation about their environment. And we know and have observed that life never comes from or is created by non-living matter as long as man has been an observation about their environment. Even in test tube situations Life has never come from non-living matter, and no matter what hypothesis you use, non-living matter has never created life, and this has been an observed fact for as long as man has been an observation about their environment. Now we need to find out what x squared, or where the origin of life, comes from. We never observed life come into existence, but evidence shows that one time life came into existence, otherwise we wouldn't be here. Now none of this has been observed, but using your college education to think about your origin, if we needed to know what started life as we know it, would you find it more logical to conclude that life was started by another life, or by non-living matter? Of course the answer is too simple. If life creates life, then the first life to come into existence would have to be started by something that has life but it would also have to be self-existent, needing nothing to start its own life, but has always been alive. It is by far the most logical conclusion. It would be illogical and irrational to use non-living matter, since non-living matter never creates life. It would be crazy to try to use non-living matter to solve the problem. Why would any college-educated, logical, and rational person believe that they come from non-living matter? It doesn't make sense, does it? You have to create all sorts of strange rationalizations and excuses. If you are an intelligent, college-educated person, all of these excuses and rationalizations probably make you feel uncomfortable. If you think about it honestly, using the critical thinking skills that you learned in college, you have to admit that using non-living matter to answer this question makes no sense at all. Now. Let me show you something remarkable. What if you instead assumed that life was started by life? A funny thing happens. 
The answer to this question makes complete sense. Just look at the question as an intelligent person would. Where did the origin of life come from? If life creates life, then the first life to come into existence would have to be started by something that has life. But also it would be self-existent, needing nothing to start its own life. All scientific evidence supports this conclusion, it is by far the most logical choice. So if we assume that a self-existent life is responsible for life starting here, then our world would make complete sense. Now we understand why a majority of people conclude that life began by some extraordinary life. The God of the Bible matches the description of the self-existent form that is necessary for the existence of life. This is how intelligent rational people know that a self-existent form exists. When you use your college education and make logical conclusions about the origin of life, you reach only one possible conclusion. The non-living matter that you have been taught to start life is completely illogical. You have to willfully discard rationality and accept bizarre rationalizations to believe non-living matter started life. The belief that life comes from non-living matter is complete nonsense. You are a smart person. It is time to free yourself from this illogical rationalization. Life creates life. The first life to come into existence would have to be started by something that has life and is self-existent, needing nothing to start its own life. It is by far the most logical conclusion. It is time to stop believing in bizarre rationalizations to justify illogical conclusions. Life simply comes from life.